He was looking at you, kid. Mm. See the smoke coming up from my coffee? It's good and hot. Look at my new cup. Look at my new cup. My little friend, Corey, from Facebook, sent this to me. And on the back it says, make today amazing. And it says, the God Rocker. Is that cute? Now you know how my brother's the Red Rocker. Well, I guess I am the God Rocker. <laughs> I like it. Corey coined it and I, I kind of like it. The God Rocker, why not? You know, we're talking about another favorite subject. I feel like I harp on this one so much, but I'm, not, I'm gonna do it again. And it is on the tongue. You know, there are people who are actually arsonists. They have the, the mouth of an arsonist. Wait, I had a word that I was calling it. What was I calling this? I called it a verbal, a verbal arsonist. Don't you love it? It says so much. They're so busy setting on fire the world, their life, other people with the junk that comes out of their mouth. Now, I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. The power of life and death is in this little member right here. Power of life and death. And you know, you can change the, the structure of your whole life, your job, the life of other people. You know, you can either bless or curse with this mouth. What are you choosing to do? Because it will affect your job, it will affect your family life, your love life, your financial life, everything. Your children, you have the power right here. Life and death, listen to that. That's powerful, life and death, right here. Now, you know, I don't wanna make light of people that have a lot of problems. But if you're one of them and you continually talk about those problems without adding, but you know what? It's going to get better. This is going to pass. You know, what you say will either empower the blessing in your life or the cursing in your life. When you sit around and whine and you don't bother to look for the good in your life, you are setting your life on a course of destruction. You will never have a good job. Nobody wants to hear a whiner. Nobody wants to hear one that blasts everybody. That's another thing. All these people that they find, they find flaws with everything. A fly in every ointment, I call it. Nothing is ever perfect. You know, and then the, and then the ones that just blast everybody. Well, you know, they do this and they do that. I mean, rude, disrespectful. I, I want to just say this one more time. I've said it before, and I've been watching this happen to a friend of mine. When you are a self-serving person and you only care about yourself, and let's face it, there's a lot of people out there like that. They don't believe in getting involved. You know, no, I don't want to be involved. Well, you know, just shut up because you don't want to be involved. You're one of those people that didn't go into the promised land when God led Moses and, and all the Jews to the promised land. And they didn't go in because they said, there's giants in there. We don't want to fight them. So they didn't get in. And there was actually only two people out of that whole bunch that chose to go in, Caleb and Joshua. Now, I've told you this before, but you need to hear it again because you're not going to make it into your promised land if you're whining and complaining all the time and you're afraid to go out and do anything or you're, you're apathetic you know, these people that d won't get involved. They say negative stuff out of their mouth and they won't do anything to try to change things. Watch your mouth. I will guarantee you, if you start quoting, you find something that fits what you need, what your need is. Let's say you're broke. Let's say your bills are behind. And you can sit around and say, you know, I'm always late on my bills. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Everybody else has got money and I don't have any money. Shut up, listen to me. <laughs> First of all, you find a scripture that, that will cover it. You, God says that he will meet all of your needs, okay? You remind him of that. And if you're a tither, and if you're not, you have no room to complain because the word clearly says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse so there might be meat in my house and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. 
try me on this. That's what he says. So, you know, if I have something go wrong, I just say, hey God, you know what? I'm a tither. I tithe, I've been tithing for probably 30 years, faithfully, whether I had the money or not. I didn't put it on the bottom of my list. It gets paid first. And tithe is simply the 10% of what you make. I tithe, you guys, and if something happens to me, I go, God, you know, I'm a tither. Rebuke that devourer for my sake, and he does. So that is one of the things that you need to do if you're broke, but that's kind of like a little extra something. Remind God of the promises that he makes. You know, he, you, he says, you, you will be the lender and not the borrower. You'll be over and not under. You'll be, you'll be, um, uh, he'll bless you in the storehouse and he'll bless you. He promises that when you serve him. So remind him of that. And so now when you start telling people, don't say, I'm broke. You say, well, right now I'm a little bit struggling, but you know what? I know one thing. God's going to come through for me. Or I'm, if you don't want to use God, all right. You know, you're afraid to use God. Don't use that. Just say, I know I'm going to be all right. I do know that. Something's going to happen. Something always does. It always happens. Use the, the positive words. Okay, those negative words will take you under every time. You know, your words will either destroy or delight. Now think of that. They're either gonna destroy or delight. There's nothing in between. I choose to be a Pollyanna. It's my choice. I don't always feel it, but I say, you know what, Cupcake? You are going to be a Pollyanna. You're going to always look for something good. You're going to believe something that's going to happen. And listen, you, your words that you hear are so important. You know, I'm, a, I'm a, a loser. I never win. All those things, you guys, those words are so powerful. They can destroy you and your children, by the way. More kids are troubled because of what their parents said to them. Start speaking positive words. If you're sick, well, you know what? You never know what God's going to do. You just say, God, or tell your friend, okay, I have a cold, but you know what? I'm going to be okay. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to have some lemon and honey and a cup of tea, and I'm going to sit back, kind of maybe take the day to day and just relax a little, and I'll be all right. But instead, you know, I just had this cold. I've had it for so long, and it just doesn't seem to go away. And I... Again, shut up. I really got a hold of that word today. Shut up. Okay. I'm here. You can't touch me. <laughs> okay, you guys, I talked for almost eight minutes and I, I could still say more on this subject because I'm one that my mouth, it can run, you know, but I'm going to tell you what, you start saying positive things to yourself so you can hear it and others get things working in your life. I bet you wonder where my Guido's at, don't you? Well, he's right here. He's been gone for two days. I have to tell you, I miss him so much when he's gone. I don't like it when he's gone because he's, look at him. Look, he's always mad when I wake up. He's my house buddy. I love him. And again, let's look at this cup one more time. Look at that picture on it. I've been drinking out of it every day. I just love it. Me and my Guido, the God Rocker. Yeah, the God Rocker, that's me. All right, you guys. Until next time, buy my book hidden treasures in secret places. I'm just shipping them out of here like crazy. I think I know I sell more than Amazon does, but it's all right. I actually, I'm okay with it. All right, until next time, this is Velma Hagar bidding you a blessed day and start saying positive things out of your mouth.